like terrorizing people in the 90s? What's it oh, like yeah. to get on this side and do the same well, <laughs> together? I, I tell you what, it's just there's so much chemistry there, so much excitement that uh, both of us, you know, he, he lights a fire, he's energized with Bunny. You know, he's always that way, he always was when we played. Um, just excited to have a guy that you have such a, a chemistry and a trust to have have him beside me right now is just a blessing. You know, I wish on the best. Cronin was a great job. I love my time with Coach Cronin, but you know, this is my guy. You know, talking about a guy you went to war with, and sweat blood with. Not only lined up beside each other, but he was 58 miles 59, so our lockers were right there. I mean, we did everything together, so it's just a real exciting time for us. You no, know, it seems like you look at the the additions that have been made with him, with, with you know Coach Baker. The the pedigree is there from guys that have been in the trenches and been successful in the in the game type situations. What is it the, that you all do that makes you a successful player and then a successful coach? Well, it's funny. I think most of the time people think that if you're not a, if you're a very good player, you're probably not going to be a very good coach because you didn't have to, you know, you, sometimes you get away with things because you were just talented. You didn't have to focus on little things like you do as a coach. Like anybody can coach. Anybody can come coach D-line. Anybody can coach receivers. But I think it still means a little bit extra something when you go walk in the meeting room and tell the kid, you know what, I did this. I was successful. This is how I did it, and this is how I'm going to make you successful because it worked for me. And I, st I still think that matters a little bit to, to necessarily. I think it's a big thing to coach the position that you play. With, with kids not having the attention span that, that they used to, mm -hmm. how big is it for that that sort of that wow factor of wow, this is what he did, and you have to get their attention like that? Well, I think uh, I think if you're on this team and we don't have their attention, they need to find a new team. After what, you know, after this point season we had last year, I think we have everybody's attention. Um, you know, the, the, the meetings have been good. I love the way we're structuring the thing. Uh, more walkthroughs. You know, we're, we're out here on our feet more instead of sitting in the meeting. You know, we're cutting our meetings down to. You know, 45 minutes. You know, we're we're we're, we're out here. We're 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 applying. We're applying it. We're not just sitting in the meeting. We're talking about a chalkboard for these kids. And uh, you know, it, it's everybody learns differently. And you have to you have to tap into what to what helps these kids learn. Every you know, every kid loses their attention span after a while. You can't sit there for two hours without having a break. No, I can't. You know, I need a break. You know, so it's just the nature. Of it. And studies have shown that if you, you go past more than an hour, you, you need a break. So. I think it's great that we're able to come out here and get the walkthroughs and get some extra time on our feet and, and apply the apply the stuff. Just sitting, besides just sitting in the classroom. What's the funniest story that you two have together from from the old play days? <laughs> uh, I gotta be able to print it. Oh, you gotta be able to print it. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's not the best story, right? <laughs> right. That's, that's usually the case. Okay, we're we're, we're playing um, Rutgers in 1995. And it's a torrential, torrential downpour, torrential downpour. I mean, it's all about ankle-high water, standing water all over the field. And back then, they used to do a thing called huddle, right? <laughs> so me, me and me and Nell are in the huddle, and he looks at me as coach, not coach, he was JC. I got to pee. I said, Cornell, look around. No one's gonna know. JC <laughs> goes, he goes. Oh, that's right. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so he peed on something. <laughs> no, if we ask him about that story, is he going to deny it? Or is he no, no, I don't know. <laughs> he can lie to you if he wants to. That's, that's about the most G-rated story I got for you. There you go. <laughs> Your career's